Good. Um, I would like to. Oh, are you ready? Okay. All right. So make sure. Okay. You're ready in your end too, sir. Okay. All right. Um, I would like to call the February 28, 28th, 2023 meeting of the Charlotte Zoning Board of Adjustment to session. I am Douglas Wilson, chairman. Also sitting on today's board is Deborah Dryden, Tariq Hamid, Hamilton Court, and John Floyd, and all of them are present today. Uh, also present um, are Lisa McCarter, our planning project manager, Tari uh, Hagler Gray, our senior assistant city attorney, Jill Sanchez Myers, also our senior assistant city attorney, Terry Edwards, work to the board, and Candy Thomas, who is our court reporter. I would like to start by acknowledging that we are conducting this meeting in person, and this is the second in person meeting of the 2023 in 2023 of the Charlotte Zoning Board of Adjustment. And as always, I'd like to ask for your patience today as we proceed. There may be slight delays as we transition between speakers, participants, and presentations. The Zoning Board of Adjustment is a quasi-judicial board that is governed by the North Carolina General Statutes and the Charlotte Zoning Ordinance. We conduct evidentiary hearings on requests for variance and appeals, among other requests. Before we begin to hear the cases on today's agenda, I would like to provide some important information on the steps that were taken to ensure that each party's due process rights are protected as we proceed. Um, notice of this meeting was provided to the applicants and the public in several ways. Notice of today's hearing was mailed to property owners within 300 feet of each subject property and notified the property owners of the in-person meeting. Notification letters also stated to contact the city immediately if there were any objections to the cases being heard on today's agenda. Notice was also provided by placing signs on each property and by publishing notice on the city's website. The notice for today's meeting contained information about means by which the public can access today's proceeding. Finally, any individual wishing to participate in today's evidentiary hearings, we're required to sign up prior to today's proceedings. This information was also included on the board's website. The order of the recommendation agenda would be as follows. The zoning administrator or zoning staff member will identify the case and recommend approval of the variance with any recommended conditions based on specific reasons. The chairperson will ask if anyone wants to speak in opposition. If there is such a person, then the case will be moved to the regular agenda and will be heard at a later date. The chairperson will ask if the board has questions for staff or if there is any reason the board wishes to move the case to the regular agenda. The chairperson calls for a motion and a second to approve the variance. The chairperson will hold a roll call vote. The order of the agenda will be as follows. All parties who plan to give testimony pro or con must be sworn in. A zoning staff member will explain why a permit was denied or why a variance is requested. The board may, excuse me, question the staff member and then the applicant may question the staff member. The applicant presents their testimony for this case. The board may question the applicant and the staff member may question the applicant. The applicant may present sworn witnesses, but they will be subject to questioning. Other parties wishing to speak pro or con will be given a reasonable time to present sworn testimony. The staff and then the applicant will be given an opportunity for a rebuttal. The chairperson calls for a motion and a second to approve the variance. The chairperson will hold a roll call vote. After hearing each case, the board will review the case and render a decision. This is usually done in closed deliberations after hearing each regular case. However, the board may elect to take up to 30 days to render a decision. You may remain present during the, during the deliberations, or you may call the zoning staff after the session to receive the decision of the board. All exhibits must remain with the board. Exhibits were recommended to be provided to the clerk no later than 12 p.m. on Monday, February 27th. If your case is not appealed to, to Superior Court after 30 days, you may pick them up or they will be destroyed. 
if you feel there is a conflict of interest of any member of the board or an association that would prejudice your case, please let it be known at the start of your case. The board is acting in a quasi judicial capacity for purposes of this hearing and can only accept sworn testimony. While the board will not specifically exclude hearsay evidence, it is only given limited weight. The North Carolina State Bar has issued an advisory opinion that is the unauthorized practice of law for any individual who is not an active member of the bar to appear for another or otherwise assist or represent another at a quasi judicial hearing on zoning and land use matters. All applicants should have been provided with a copy of that advisory opinion as part of the application packet. If you are a property owner or a non lawyer here on behalf of a property owner and have not received a copy of that opinion, please notify the clerk the documents will be, will be provided to you. If, as a result of this advisory opinion, the applicant would like to request a continuance of his or her case, the board will consider such a request at the start of that case. Appeal from this board is to the Mecklenburg County Superior Court. You have 30 days from the date of the board's written decision in which to appeal in accordance with North Carolina general stature 160 D 405 D. In order to receive a written copy of the decision, any aggrieved party must file a written request for a copy of the board's decision. By filling out the form, which must be filed with the board's clerk or chairperson at the time of the hearing of your of the case. Uh, you will hear um, four cases today. Um, we're going to have a continuous on two of them, and we will get to those uh, once I open up the meeting. Okay, that's it. So the first case uh, we're going to hear is uh, case number twenty twenty two dash zero seven seven. Lisa. Would you like to vote on the continuances first or? Yes, sure. I'd like to use a vote on it. Um, on the continuance, I know the 2022-077 was asking for a continuance. Okay, all right. So if I'm hearing you correctly, um, the board will have to, uh, is there a motion to um, provide a continuance for uh, this case until I think you said June? Yes, and this is for the second case. On the, It's on the regular agenda. And the applicant has requested a continuance for June and staff's in support of it. Oh, okay. All right. That's Corporation. Okay, so moved for a continuance. Second. Okay. Uh, most have been properly moved by Mrs. Dryden, second uh, by uh, Mr. Ford, Mr. Floyd, excuse me. Um, now we're going to move to a, a roll call vote, Mr. Floyd. All right. Ms. Dryden? Dryden, yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Court? Court, yes. Mr. Hamid? Hamid, yes. Okay. Wilson, yes. Okay, so case number uh, 2022-077 has been uh, moved to uh, June. Okay. Um, next case would be uh, case number 2023-011. And that's also been, uh, the applicant has also requested for a continuance in that case. Um, I guess I, I saw Mr. Murray. He's here. Okay. Um, is 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 there a certain date you want to move that to, or um, we just requested it to next next month. Next month. All right. So that's in March. Okay. All right. Um, is there a motion uh, to move this case two zero two three dash zero one one to March? I make that motion to move it and approve the continuance. Okay. All right. Motion's been uh, moved by Ms. Dryden, second by Mr. Floyd. Uh, now we will do a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Floyd? Four, yes. All right, Ms. Dryden? Dryden, yes. Mr. Court? Court, yes. Mr. Hamid? Hamid, yes. Okay, Wilson, yes. All right, great. So now we're moving back to the, recommend, the recommended agenda. And the first case on there is 2023 0112. Uh, Lisa, of course, I will have to swear you in. Um, Bible there. Okay. Uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter at hand? Okay, great. Okay. 
All right, our first case is a residential rear yard variance request. The applicant's requesting a 12 foot variance from the required 45 foot rear yard to allow the expansion of a non conforming structure in the established rear yard. And I'll give you a minute to look over your findings. Okay. Exhibit number one is a vicinity map of the property. Exhibit number two is a zoning map. The property is zoned R3 single family and it's surrounded by other R3 properties. Exhibit number three is an aerial map of the property. Exhibit four is a close up aerial map of the property. Exhibit five is background. The property was subdivided in 1923, and there's a home on the property that was built in 1928. Exhibit number six is the variance request. The 1928 home encroaches 12 feet into the required 45 foot rear yard. And since it predates the ordinance, it meets the definition of a non-conforming structure. The applicant states they would like to do renovations, a vertical addition, and possibly reconstruction in the established rear yard. Non-conforming structure can only be expanded in the compliant area and not within the required 45 foot rear yard. So the applicants are requesting a 12 foot variance to allow them to expand the home using the established 33 foot rear yard. So without the variance, they could only expand within this area, not past the blue. Exhibit number seven is variance criteria. The zoning ordinance requires all standards to be met. Unnecessary hardships must result from strict application of the ordinance. The hardship must be peculiar to the property. The hardship must not result from actions taken by the applicant and the request must be consistent with the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance and uphold public safety. Exhibit number eight is considerations. Staff finds the request meets the standards for granting a variance in the zoning ordinance. The hardship was not caused by the applicants. The applicants purchased the home in 2022 with the existing encroachment from the original 1928 home construction. The hardship results from condi conditions that are peculiar to the property because the rear angle of the property creates an irregular building footprint with the depth ranging from 24 to 73 feet. The variance would permit the home to maintain its current depth of 55 feet, which is compliant with other homes in the area or consistent with other homes in the area that range from 42 to 70 feet in depth. And that's just measured from aerial photography. So the existing home is 55 feet in this area since the rear line kind of goes like that. Exhibit nine is considerations. The requested variance meets the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance. It will not adversely affect adjacent properties because the established rear yard has existed for 95 years and won't change. Unnecessary hardship result from strict application of the ordinance. The applicant states that the initial engineering review of the home indicated there's uncertainty regarding the stability of the existing foundation and the strict application of the ordinance would not allow reconstruction of the home in the area of encroachment if it's needed for the foundation. Exhibit number 10 is a photo of the property, and that's the end of my presentation if you have any questions for me. Yes. Correct. 
Yeah, the applicant's intention is that the footprint not change, but they're just uncertain about the foundational structure. That's that's okay. Um, at grade patios are allowed to encroach into yards. So. Yeah, the deck can encroach um, up to 25% into the rear yard. Um, are there any other questions for Lisa from the board? Okay. Um, Terry, is there anybody here? He's not position. Yeah, not okay. position. Just a question. Too. A question. Okay. All right. Um. So I have to swear. Yeah. Have to swear him in for a question. Agenda. I do I have to swear him in. It, yeah, you have to yeah. take it off the recommendation agenda. Okay. So I have to swear him in. Yes. Okay. All right. Um. If you don't mind, just coming to the table here. Just have to swear you in. Yeah, and you can place your hand in the Bible. Okay, uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter at hand? All right, you may proceed. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Do you do you need our name? Need yeah, statement. Put it on, the, or do we need to? Yeah, I think. I mean, um, the, We're just talking about no. procedural. Procedure. Yeah, procedures. Yeah. Okay, I make a motion that we move this case to the um, to regular agenda. To the regular agenda. So oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think he's just asking a question. That's it. Yeah. Um, who can take that question? You, Lisa, or Mr. Murray? If I answer that, I, I will say with construction, there will be like erosion control review as well. Um, we do have erosion control staff that review all the building permits, but um, Mr. Murray can yes. answer. Do, uh, if you get a demolition permit and a grading permit, or if it's required, technically we're under an acre, so you don't have to get a grade. But um, anything that would be required from erosion control. Yeah, I don't know that his question is really about erosion. That goes back to my prior yeah. question. They're not increasing the footprint of the building. Right. So, it, there is no we're, so the purpose of the variance was because they want to use the footprint that exists to redo this home, to rebuild the home. And so the intention is not to be any closer than 33 feet as the corner exists today. 
the you know we would comply with the with the ordinance um, as far as runoff. I can't tell you if the runoff's coming from this property if it's coming from next door. I don't know. Those. Well, right, nineteen twenty-five. Right, and it some of those. Right. Okay. I, Yeah, all I can say is I, I don't know where this runoff comes from, and uh, we would comply with the standards. And is I guess we can pass this information along to the builder. Well, I guess we just need to make sure that the variance um, that we're approving is limited to the existing footprint and not an expansion, because if you know. If encroachment into that established rear yard is approved, it would it would I mean, if we're approving encroachment, are we are we improving encroachment all along that to that thirty three foot mark all the way down the property? So if they wanted to enclose that deck, if they wanted to uh, you know put heated square footage where that deck currently is, would that be permitted when we granted this variance? Correct. You would essentially change the re required rear yard. Right. So our approval wouldn't limit them. Their intent may be to limit to the existing footprint, but our approval would not limit them to that. Yeah, from the aerial, the deck is already covered. Right, but they could build a triangular thing, and they could they could they could in theory create impervious surface for the entire like right up to the thirty foot established rear yard in a triangular fashion, and all the way up to the rear side setback, and they could increase probably that looks like maybe thirty percent or maybe it may you could almost double the square footage if you maxed out all the way to the setbacks and built a you know a wedge shape structure under the and could you do that under the variance that we're granting correct right. and you can re, you can place conditions on the approval if you wish to that are reasonably related to the request i think in the past there's been conditions that you know it uses the existing footprint or i think we've had a french drain or other types of runoff measures so on the deck the deck is accepted whether it's covered Uh, cover for that. Yeah, Lisa, am I correct that under the ordinance, if the owner wanted to, they could essentially create a brick patio, some kind of impervious surface at grade level all around that entire area? Yes. It not require a variance to do that. That's correct, because it's not in a watershed overlay area. That's right. And also in the UDO, five feet of this variance would be 40 feet. Yeah, under the facts number eight, it does state that the applicant states they would like to do substantial renovations, vertical addition, and or reconstruction in the established rear yard. There's no indication that there would be additional heated square footage. Does that hold? I guess that's my question. I mean, in the findings, they're stating their intent, and is that intent not binding? The variance would just be for 12 feet from the rear yard, so it would set a new rear yard for the lot. So. Um, the permitting staff would go by the Okay, are there any other questions for the applicant or, um, and I'm sorry, I blanked on your name already. Um, Ms. Crawford. Okay. All right, um, hearing none, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Um, so we're. 
Where are we? <laughs> Jim. Um. So I really uh, sort of by de facto, since you've kind of opened it up to other um, people to speak, including Mr. Murray, you kind of de facto moved it to the regular agenda, I think is kind of the question. So, I mean, uh, is that what you were asking? If you would, if, if Mr. Murray would like to present anything else, I think the board's kind of essentially moved in that direction. I mean, I may be at f wrong for saying this, but in my opinion, since it wasn't an actual, um, he wasn't testifying against it. He was just asking more of a, of a um, architectural question. I think it can stay on a recommended agenda. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. No. yeah. So no, because unfortunately, yeah. there's not any evidence that was really presented in that testimony. That was not. I mean, I would have to object to that as not being evidentiary. So. Yeah. Um, Mr. Murray, while you're here, accept the condition that to the existing footprint. Yeah, right. So if we didn't get the variance, we have a five foot. So the UDO is going to give us five additional feet in June. But there are certain parts of this, like if we wanted to improve the deck and some other impervious areas that we could do without the variance. So the concern about impervious area. I don't, I'm not asking about impervious area. I'm talking yeah. about heat restriction. For the encroaching area. Yeah. yeah um, I don't want anything that limits us under what we can do under the UDA. But you're asking it, it, for the existing heated square footage. But I think the, what has been presented to us seems to indicate, I think everybody on the panel is under the impression that the outfit is asking, and the question I asked, the intent was not to expand. Yeah, okay, the I follow you. For the house, for the house that is heated on the corner, that encroaches the 13 feet, we will meet with that, yes. We just don't want to be limited on anything else that we can do under the ordinance in the exceptions for like the deck and brick areas and stuff like that. But as far as the corner of the house, we can consent to that. Sorry. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Murray? Uh, I mean, I, I wonder, um, if the applicant, since I believe this is more discussion than we typically have, we typically don't have the applicant speak if it's on the recommendation agenda. You've asked questions at this point, and I just think that it might be just for the record, um, if Mr. Murray and his client would like to present evidence, I think that we would offer you that opportunity at this point since there have been questions res with respect to the petition. Typically, in recommendation agenda, it's only staff there. It, once the petitioner speaks, um, then it becomes a regular agenda item. Well, even though he's been confirmed for his attorney and the attorney's been presenting on his behalf, I, you know, I just want to give him the opportunity to, if you would like to present evidence at this point, um, I believe since we have opened it up, it's moved from, but I'll defer to Jill, but I believe that this is more than we typically would do for a recommendation agenda item. Yes, thank you, Terry. That's what I was trying to say earlier, but I appreciate the uh, greater explanation. I, I would agree. All right. Okay. Well, with that said, um, is there a motion to move this case to the, uh, from the recommended agenda to the agenda? Well, it um, looks like he's pretty much been not Ms. saying he wants to. Yeah. Uh, Ms. McCarter presented that exhibit right there is mine. Uh, Ms. McCarter presented the evidence that we would stand on. The findings of fact are the evidence that we would stand on. If the board has any questions, I'd be happy to answer, but we'd be willing to stand on the city's presentation of evidence. Yeah. I think we just made it bigger than what it was. You just yeah. got to make sure he has a full opportunity. Typically, you're asking the city questions and they're responding, but it has gone beyond that at this point. All right. Any other questions? All right. Um, 
Thank you, Mr. Murray. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, is there a uh, motion on the floor to approve or deny the variance? Okay. Is there a second? I made second. All right. Motion was made to approve the variance by Mr. Floyd. Second by uh, Mr. Ham Hamid. Uh, now we're going to move to a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Hamid. Hamid, yes. Uh, Mr. Court. Court, yes. Ms. Dryden. Dryden, yes. Mr. Floyd. Floyd, yes. Wilson, yes. Okay. Variance has been approved. Now we're moving to our regular agenda. And the next. Bonnie. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I haven't been here since December, so I'm a little bit rusty. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, this is. No, I make a motion to approve the finding of facts as. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the finding of facts and conclusion of the law as written was made by Ms. Dryden. Second. Second by Mr. Floyd. Uh, now move to a roll call vote. Mr. Floyd. Floyd yes. Ms. Dryden. Dryden, yes. Uh, Mr. Court. Court, yes. Mr. Me. How many deals? Wilson, yes. Again, my apologies. Uh, it's my first meeting of the year. A little bit rusty. Okay, now we can move to the regular agenda. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we can move to the regular agenda. All right, so next is case number 2023 008. Okay. Lisa, you may proceed. All right, this is an accessory dwelling unit or ADU variance. The applicant is requesting a four foot variance from the required six foot side yard for an accessory dwelling unit. And I'll give you a minute to look over your findings. Okay, Lisa, you may proceed. Exhibit number one is a vicinity map of the property. Exhibit number two is a zoning map. The property is zoned R3 and it's in an area of R3 zoning. Exhibit number three is an aerial map. Exhibit number four is a close up aerial map. There's the home and here's the ADU structure. Exhibit number five is background. There's a single family home on the property constructed in 1969 and a detached garage constructed in 1990 that's located in the established rear yard. The garage is located two feet from the side property line, which was the required accessory structure side yard when the garage was constructed. And since that time, the requirements changed and now there's a three foot required side yard for an accessory structure. The garage is non-conforming since it doesn't meet the current zoning ordinance requirements. In 2022, a building permit was issued for a garage upfit. Upfits to existing accessory structures don't require county building plan review or city zoning review. The upfit included three bedrooms and one full bathroom, but it was not permitted as an ADU, which would have triggered county building plan review and city zoning review. Exhibit number six is background. A notice of violation was issued after a neighbor complained that someone was living in the structure. Since the structure is being used for human habitation, it meets the definition of a dwelling and is classified as an ADU instead of just a typical accessory structure like a garage or office space. The change of use triggers a required six foot side yard for the ADU. The structure is located approximately two feet off the side property line. Exhibit number seven is the variance request. The applicant is requesting a four foot variance to permit the conversion of the accessory structure to an ADU. You can see the close up, it's about 2.2 feet. Exhibit number eight is the standards for granting a variance. The zoning ordinance requires that all the standards are met. A necessary hardship must result from strict application of the ordinance. The hardship must be peculiar to the property. The hardship must not result from actions taken by the applicant and the request must be consistent with the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance and uphold public safety. Exhibit number nine is considerations. 
Staff finds the request doesn't meet all the standards for granting a variance. The hardship results from actions taken by the applicant because the structure was permitted as a garage upfit rather than an ADU. The hardship does not result from conditions peculiar to the property because there's room within the compliant ADU building footprint that an ADU could have been constructed. So in yellow here is the compliant ADU building area, 15 feet off the rear, six feet off the sides. Unnecessary hardships do not result from strict application of the zoning ordinance because there are other options for compliance. They could stop the use of the structure as an ADU, convert it back to a garage or another type of space, move the existing structure into the compliant building area, remove a portion of the existing structure that encroaches into the required six foot side yard, and reverting the existing structure back to a garage and constructing a new ADU in the compliant building area. The request is not consistent with the spirit intent of the zoning ordinance because there's a required six foot side yard dimension for all ADUs up to 24 feet in height in the R3 zoning district. Exhibit number 10 is photos. And that's the end of my presentation. If you have questions for me, and we also have the applicant here and folks signed up to speak. So. So, Terry, on um, this applicant, yes. do we have anybody in opposition? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, before I swear on um, the applicant in, does anybody on the board have questions for Lisa? So that means, I guess, through their permitting portal, the county gets these applications submitted. Yeah. And if it says garage upfit, they just don't look at plans. There's doesn't trigger a zoning review. Um, if it was permitted, if it came in as an ADU, then it would have triggered all those things. Well, what is an up? What is what's the definition of an upfit? It's um, what theirs was was converting unheated garage into a heated area. Heat and cooled area. Is that what on the application that they submitted? Yeah, so here's some pictures of the application. So they submitted as a garage upfit. So it did say um, to divide heated area into three rooms, one full bath, and a hallway with electrical and plumbing connections as needed, but it wasn't permitted as an ADU. So I guess if you were upfitting a garage, um, Maybe your garage didn't have electricity and plumbing and you wanted to add electricity and plumbing. So that would be an example of a garage upfit that would not be an ADU renovation. So okay. some people do it for home gym space or office spaces. But in their application, they actually indicate that they were. Correct. They, they the ones that selected garage upfit. I, I don't have that information. All right. So, um, do you have another question for? Us? Yeah. What? So the variance. Um, what? What is the number? What? How many feet are we talking about? Four feet. Um, so they are. Uh, it's a six foot, and they're encroaching to two feet. Okay. I. Are we all? Are we typically measuring from? Roof eaves or walls? We have to measure from the roof eaves um, because architectural features aren't allowed to encroach with the ADUs and accessory structures. Okay. And that's consistent with all we, okay. All right. Um, good morning. Um, good morning. If you could uh, please state your name and address for the court reporter. Uh, Omar Nunez at 5553 Elsinore Place, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. I'm the mother. Oh. It's known as 5553 Elsinore Place. Okay. 227. All right, great. If you can please place your hand on the Bible. Uh, and are you going to be speaking as well? She can try. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying. Okay. okay. All right. Um, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth of the matter in hand? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. You may proceed with your presentation. Um, well, I don't have much of a presentation, but I do. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to state that uh, we're not the ones that submitted for the permit. 
we, a construction company, handle everything for the permits, uh, plumbing, electrical, all the work. Um, so we weren't aware of that uh, rule of the six feet rule from a, uh, ADU to the property line. So we didn't know any of that um, before we, if we would have, if we would have before we started the work, we would have stopped the work immediately and figure something else out. But uh, we got that that news about the that rule after we had completed all the work and everything. But I do have a letter from the neighbors who it is encroaching on um, saying that it's okay, that they, they do not mind that it's encroaching on their, on their yard. Um, what else? That's it, that's really all I have to say. If you guys have any questions for me. Uh, it, on the permits, it says uh, 30,000, but it went over and it was about 29,000. Pero cuánto costó exactamente? 53,000. Oh, 53,000. Is there a kitchen or? There is a countertop kitchen. There is a microwave. Yeah, microwave and then uh, a little, you know, those stoves with like the one that you put on a counter. And, and a sink, sink, yes, like a kitchen a sink, a uh, full bathroom and a little kitchen, uh, dining area. So you built it so that somebody could live in there and not have to live in the primary so, structure. Yes. So the goal was me and my mother, we, we bought this house or I, she wanted a house. I, I'm not much for property owning, but I wanted to help her get a house. It was, it's the least I can do. I wanted to buy her a house, but I, I don't have that kind of job. So. We, we took out a loan, we bought that house and the goal was to turn the garage because the detached garage was already there. It was already that far from their property line. So we were planning on turning it into a little living space for me because I wanted to pay rent. I wanted to pay her rent, but you know, I don't want to live with my mom. So I was going to live in that, in that little ADU and, and pay for the rent of, of the house. It was, it was the closest thing to me buying my mom a house. So we did that and after the work was done, so I was living with my, I'm living with my brother right now in Clover, South Carolina. Um, he has a house Bye. over there and he should have been married by now. It's, it's already been a year. He was supposed to get married and cause I'm right now I'm splitting the mortgage with him. He can't pay it all on his own. So he was supposed to be married so they can move in together and I can move back over here. Uh, but he hasn't done that, so I can't leave him yet and go help out over there. So what we had to do was rent it out to someone. Um, right now, there's a couple living there. And that's after they started living there is when we got the, the notice of, oh, we're, we're too close. And, and that's, that's all. On a lease? Versus like a... It's it's a lease. It's a lease. Yeah. Uh, for the record, real quick, petitioner exhibit number one was submitted by Mr. Omar. Thank you. And I just wanted to remind the board um, that that letter uh, is considered it it is hearsay um, because the uh, neighbor is not here uh, to be questioned or cross examined about any of the statements. So just wanted to keep that. Um, in mind, as you know, hearsay is not specifically excluded, but it should be given only limited weight. So it meets the size requirement, it meets the rear yard requirement, so everything's fine. Any other questions for the applicant on the board? Okay. All right, hearing none, uh, thank you very much. So we have somebody here in opposition. Yes, Chair. Uh, we'll start out with uh, Ms. Whitley. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, please state your name and address for the court reporter. Jane Whitley, 
and my address is 5559 Elsinore Place, uh, Charlotte, NC 28227. Okay. And uh, do you uh, swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter at hand? Yes, I do. All right. You may proceed. Okay. Um, I live on the opposite side of the property from where the encroachment occurs. Um, as you can tell, that is a cul-de-sac. Um, to have additional dwelling there with no parking, they are already parking in their front yard as one of the photographs shows. The homeowners park two cars in their front yard, which is a violation of city ordinance. And then they have additional cars parking in the driveway. At times there are cars parked in front of my house. I only have about 25 feet of road frontage. And this is um, where my trash receptacles and recycling receptacles have to be in my mailbox. And not so much from these people, but previous people that have lived there um, when they have company and stuff, they park in front of my house and my my trash and does not get picked up and my mail does not get delivered. Um, so in within that cul-de-sac, there are violations, not only from them. Um, the, that is a big concern. There have been times I have not been able to back out of my driveway. I know there was a, a, a truck there just this week or, you know, over the weekend. Um, and it is a concern that emergency vehicles, fire police and ambulance, whether they can access my property as well as the other properties there. Um, I'm assuming that with the with the three bedrooms, um, they have not indicated whether that would be rented as to one like one family. It I'm assuming that the potential that they could rent three bedrooms to three individuals that would have three cars as well as their two cars, and that's going to be a big problem there. And that's my only, you know, that's my biggest concern is from a safety standpoint. Um, before you uh, oh. return to your seat, I didn't know if any of the board members had any questions for you. When you said you live on the opposite side, can you just clarify, you live to the north of that red star, like up? Up the big black. Thank yes. you. See, it. all right. So any questions? Yeah, so what's showing there is my property line. There is, you know, a driveway there. So I have this much room <laughs> of street frontage, usable street frontage to put trash, yard waste, and, and the, that kind of thing. Thank you very much. Uh, Teresa and Bart, you guys. Okay. Uh, good morning to both of you. Um, before I swear you in, if you could please give your name and address for the court reporter. Uh, my name is Teresa Rick, R I E K, uh, 5540 Elsinore Place, Charlotte, 28227. And I'm Bart Rick. Okay. And um, if you can place your hand on the Bible there, uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter at hand? Yes. You may proceed. I think uh, uh, Terry's pulling up your pictures now. So. Okay. What I what I'd like to do is 
kind of go back to the beginning a little bit on this because some of it's slightly misleading. Um, where the surveyor's map that that we ha that you had up earlier, and the inset that showed the three foot to the front left corner of the garage and two feet to the front left corner of the eave. Um, when they when they purchased this property January 21st of 22 and did not immediately move in, which always kind of flags as odd because normally people buy a house and the first thing they do is, you know, they're moving in. Um, shortly after, I don't know how long, maybe a month after they moved in or after they purchased it, contractors showed up and started working on the garage. Now, the application that they submitted says that it was an existing heated area. And I sent pictures that show it was actually, there's another, I sent another one. Uh, while you're here, let me show you one thing. If you look to the left of the garage, there is nothing in the yard between that fence and the garage. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? There's nothing there. It's it's just there's no heating in area. There's nothing there. There's a, a fence to the back, and then that building back there is on the property behind them. Okay. This here is a tiny little wood fence that the old man that lived there when he perched when he built the garage, he because it slopes off. So he built that there for kind of protection for him and his wife. Okay. Um, and as you see here, there's nothing behind the the garage, and there's nothing to the left of the garage as far as a heating and air conditioning unit. There was, it was not a heated structure. And ironically, I took this picture, if you scroll back out for a second, on December 10th of 21. And it proves that it was a open studded, simple garage. That back wall was a false wall with a door. It was his tool room where he stored his tools. That's all it was. Um, in March of 22, I am the one who called building code because they were converting the garage. They converted the garage. They didn't upfit the garage. It implies that it was already a heated structure, which it was not. There was no plumbing to the structure. And the only electrical that was going to that structure was one 25 amp line that went from the house electrical panel through a PVC underground and back up to the right front corner of the garage. And right there you can see in that front corner, there's an outlet and that is where the, the electrical came into the garage. And that one 25 amp line was for two light bulbs and two outlets, one of them which the garage door opener plugged into. That's all that was in that structure. Um, so in March, I called the building codes because they had converted it to a three bedroom apartment and there was no building permit. They had not applied for a permit. Um, and the, what they're stating in their application is that the city didn't tell them what they should have done. Otherwise they wouldn't have spent all that money, but the city didn't get involved until March 30th. That's when they showed up and put a stop work order on the door and told them, you have to apply for permits. You can't just come in and build a garage or build an apartment without the proper permitting. So the fact that they claim in here it was a heated structure is misleading. It was not. The next picture you're going to see, there's the AC unit that they put in for this garage. You see it there on the left? between the fence and the wooden fence, if you will. That right there is the air conditioned HVAC that they put in for that garage. The pad of that unit is actually pressing against that fence to the neighbors next door. It's actually, there's no side yard. You, there's no way you can get between the heating and air, the HVAC unit, and the fence to go around. So 
on their application, it says they're actually requesting what they've written on their application is that the code requirement is a six foot side yard. And what they're requesting is a four foot side yard, which is a two foot reduction from what's required. That's what they've asked for. What they've actually put in is a zero side yard. There's no side yard anymore. And God forbid there were an emergency in that new apartment that's going to put other people other people's property at risk now because there's no buffer there's no fire i don't know what the word is that you guys use but the that i'm assuming the side yard variance is to protect structures you know neighbor structures from one another there's no side yard anymore it's gone um i know that when he built the garage originally the uh, previous owner it was to code with that front left corner being at three feet and he it's not straight down the side yard either the property line is straight but he built the garage he tilted it so the left front corner of the building is at three feet the left rear corner of the building is at five feet and the reason he did that is because there's some trees back there and he didn't want to take the trees down so they just you know cocked it over a little bit um Hold on, there was something else I wanted to add in there. What am I forgetting? We're concerned as well about the additional parking and the cars that uh, potential is there for. With the uh, three rooms in this garage, they could potentially rent it out to three separate individuals, like Jane was stating, three additional cars or possibly more. Um, they're parking in the grass in the front yard. They started that immediately. Have been doing that since they moved into the place or bought it. Um, everyone else in the on the street, if they've had multiple vehicles, they've expanded their driveways to make accommodations for that. We'd kind of like to preserve the integrity of the neighborhood as it's been for for years. We've lived there for thirty years ourselves, so. <clears throat> That's a major concern. Um, Jane stated the safety issues. Uh, if we get three or four more cars in there and they stop parking on the grass, then they're going to be parking in the street and severely restrict the access to that cul de sac. Uh, so that's a big concern to us. Um, from what we can ascertain from the packet that we, we received from you guys is that there's currently no um, CO certificate of occupancy been issued for the structure. There's people living in there already. Now, this isn't a potential to rent. They're already, there's people already live in that ADU so, without yeah. a certificate of occupancy. We have concerns about the way the whole process has been done. Um, doesn't feel feel to us like they've done things in a proper manner, kind of circumvented some of the rules, not paying attention to um, what should be done. The city uh, notice for this meeting was the yellow sign they posted in the front yard. Um, it was put up on, I believe it was Thursday the 16th. They immediately took it down. Fortunately, one of my neighbors got a picture of it before it was taken down or we wouldn't even know about this. It was taken down the same day it was put up. The city put it up, right? You guys, somebody from the city goes out and puts a sign in the yard and just so happened that one of the neighbors saw it and she took a picture of it and it came down immediately after she took that picture. <clears throat> so a lot of people on the street don't, didn't, don't even know that this is going on. Yeah, we'd had more neighbors here to protest this, but I just didn't have the opportunity. I've been working six days a week, 12 hours a day. I haven't had the chance to talk to any of them to try to get more support for opposition to this. Um, I don't want to nitpick, but according to the violations that were issued on this 
section 12.407 says that the pedestrian entrance to this ADU shall be located to the side or rear of the structure. On one of these pictures, you see the whole thing and there's a front door right on the front. I mean, you know, I can sit on my front step and watch everybody come yeah. and go all day long. There you can see the, yeah, the it's, entrance doors on the front of the structure. So that doesn't meet code either. So that's basically all. This low, yeah, that's the neighbors to the left of the property. The white car is belongs to whoever's living inside the garage right now. And that young lady was actually sweeping out the garage the other day, you know, doing her normal. That was just trying to prove there's people already living in there. And there's another picture that speaks to the parking in the front yard. That's been going on since day one, but initially we weren't really concerned because they had contractors coming and going and there was work being done. Where are you gonna park? Well, you know, you have to have allow for the contractors. So we kind of looked at, overlooked it initially because, you know, people are moving in and there's work being done, blah, blah, blah. But we also assumed that when all the work was done, that they would go back to the driveway. You know, people buy houses in our neighborhood because it's a quiet, well-established, pretty yards. Everybody tries to keep everything looking nice. And now and they park in the yard all the time. Whether there's a car in the driveway or not, and as you can see, there's plenty of space in that driveway for the two extra cars, but they never park there. They use it as like if. So, you know, the driveway from the street to the house, the driveway is used as an aisle. Like if you were at the grocery store. Pull up the aisle and then you pull into your parking spots. And understand it's inconvenient to. We have a single lane driveway as well. We had three kids that grew up in the house and the driveway would be parked full of cars and your third one in. And you got to go and everybody's got to move their cars. It's inconvenient. I get that. We dealt with it for years. That's just a. But we still deal life. with it. We have 2 cars. He goes to work. I don't if I come in after him. In the morning at 5 o'clock, I better be out there moving my car. So that's, I mean, you don't, you just, you do what you have to do. So but we don't park in our yard. We just, don't park in the grass. There's multiple things that objections we have. A lot of the rules seem to have been circumvented, misrepresented. Things don't meet code. The parking issues, the additional cars that are going to be coming in. We have some major objections to say to you so the door orientation for the adu um, is only for an adu located within a principal structure so like one that's internal to a home but for a detached adu you can have the door facing forward it doesn't address where the door has to be faced for the pedestrian entry, um, the HVAC equipment, um, <clears throat> if the board were to grant the requested variance, that would be taken care of by the um, new side yard because HVAC can encroach up to 50%. And it's a little deceiving if Terry can pull back up my survey slide. It's actually 1.5 feet to the HVAC. So if the two foot um, side yard is granted that 50% would take. Care. Still need to get permitting. If, if the need to get permitted as an ADU. I'm sure there's all kinds of inspections that they need. The driveway has to be the same as the principal structure and there has to be one space. So for the a, a single family, you have to have two spaces. So what they would do is uh, they would accommodate that by each 18 feet of the driveway. So it would be accommodated. But 
by city ordinance that's um, separate from the zoning ordinance, you can park in unimproved area. But that would be a separate. And I would just like to point out that this drawing is very deceiving, as you saw from the actual picture of the AC unit. It says that it's going to encroach into it by 50%. But there's no side yard anymore. You have building, AC, fence. It's on the fence. So to say that it's, you know, well, it'll encroach by 50%. No, it takes up the two feet. This is the survey and it's measuring to the property line. So if you see the HVAC is 1.5 feet to the property line and the, um, they're requesting a two foot side yard. So 50% of the two foot would allow the HVAC to be up to one foot from the side yard. So they would be within that. I don't understand what that. Oh yes, it is a certified survey. I'm sorry. Application. Yes, in their application, it's, oh, hold on. This was the variance application zoning ordinance that they filled out on December 29th. Um, hold on, let me find the one that says, what does it say? It's page three of three. It's the last box to note. Uh, page three of three on the building permit application. Uh, under where it says permit notes. Oh, yeah, under the permit notes. Page three of three. It says to divide an existing and heated area into three rooms. Our concern mainly is from what I've read and their objection that the city should have told them or they wouldn't have spent all this money. I don't know how much money they'd already spent before the city ever even knew they had gone in. So when the city inspector came in and stopped the work, I don't know how much of it had already been completed. I do know that there was already insulation all the way throughout and, and the um, interior walls studs had already been constructed. That's when we called the city and complained that there was no building permit. The garage door was already gone and the front wall and the new front door was on the building. That is how the city inspector found it. And so as far as the permit notes, notes saying that it was an existing heated area, I, do, I have no idea what the inspector was told. Obviously, I didn't go across the street and ask him, but that it, it wasn't that. Well, the C, they got the stop work order on March 30th. Um, and then, and then they had to apply for permits and whatnot. Um, Well, what I'll tell you is this, on the day the inspector came out and put the stop work order on, he left and the contractors and whoever else was there stood around and waited for about five or 10 minutes and they went back into the garage and continued working. I called the city back again that afternoon and told them and the man on the phone was, well, yeah, we already have this information. The inspector's already been out. I said, I understand that. You're not hearing me. The inspector came, put a stop work order on the door. They waited five minutes and they're back to work. They're working as we speak. I can hear the drilling and the, the guns and, and everything going off. Hammer. The hammering, thank you. So then the inspector came back the following day, I believe it was. It was a day or two later he came back. And then they actually stopped and the contractors were slinging their tools and material in their trailer and they all left. Very shortly thereafter, several days later, the contractor came back and that is when they started working on upgrading the house. So they hadn't even moved into the house yet. They went straight into the garage. Did I answer your question? Okay. 
Yeah, I, you know, I think when we're talking about hardship and we're talking about um, constructing under the assumption that they're doing something legal, I think it's, I think it's important to have that in the findings of fact. Is there any, um, do we have factual information we can put in the findings of fact about the timeline of the, or the, the stop work order specifically maybe? There was no record of a stop work order. Okay. There is a case number from the zoning notice of violation that 2022-0057372, which was from 22, not 23. Um, and on the application, actually, it does say, hold on, let me go back. It's not there, it's here. On the variance application zoning ordinance, page seven at the bottom, and they're referring to um, for, on December 29th of 22, and they refer to that case 2022-005-7372. They had to check off, has work started on this project? They checked yes. Did you obtain a building permit? It says yes. It's slightly misleading because the building permit didn't come until after they started working on the project. But then the next one is, have you received a notice of violation or stop work order for this project? And they checked yes. I imagine there, I don't have a copy of their, I'm sorry. But the notice of violations is separate from the stop work order. So they 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 came in and they were working without a permit. From this is how this is the timeline as I as I see it. But right, right. Well, I think the way that the problem I'm having is the way that it reads here. It looks like the uh, a permit was issued in error, or or it it's it it implies that perhaps and that and that speaks to the hardship of them having to rip it out or 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 whatever um and without but i don't think that's but that doesn't really feel like it represents what what happened i feel like there's some facts in here that are missing that make this make the way it reads sound differently than the way it went down i guess mm -hmm. If there and it, maybe there's some finding the, some facts in here that I'm missing that we need to that was not. No, okay. As you all were delivering, I can't found that there was no record of a stop work order. If you want us to share that on the screen, you have it. Hmm? Oh, there is a stop work order. <laughs> there's okay. not. Oh, there. Okay, there's not. Okay, sharing that there is not. Okay. All right. So just for the sake of time, I know we have some other people to speak, and I'm sure maybe the applicant may want to. Come up after that. Um, are there any other questions for um, uh, the neighbors here? Thank you very much. We might want to, if the applicant wants to ask the neighbors any questions, um, they have that opportunity. Also, no, he, he just he just said no. He said no. Yeah. Miss D, you can come on up. Last one, Douglas. Last one? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, please state your name and address for the court reporter. D. Austin. And I live at 5548 Elsinore. So I'm across the street. Okay. And uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter at hand? Yes. All right. You may proceed. The concern that I have agreeing with uh, Ms. Whitley is the parking mainly the parking. 
in case of emergency vehicles, she's already stated that. And I think that had happened once before where somebody was parked there in the circle. It's a small cul-de-sac. It's not like huge. It's just a small area. And the emergency vehicle came in and, you know, there was an issue there. We've also had, you know, seen the huge recycling truck trying to turn around, the trash trying to turn around in that circle. And when cars are parked there, it's hard for them to do it. So my question is, where are they going to park their cars? If I mean, are you going to expand the driveway to, in, you know, lay some concrete down in the front yard? Yes. That's my question. Yeah, since you're already parking there, make it a bigger driveway. Um, and will that be done before, you know, three people move into the place? Uh, three, three different people with lots of cars? Well, see, that's not, uh, <laughs> it was just for me. It's just for me. I can't move. I can't move in yet. So mm -hmm. um, we had to rent it out. And right now there's only a couple living there. Like it's, it's actually mm -hmm. two men. And they're living there. Yeah, so that's my. Oh, and they don't have a vehicle right now. Okay, yeah, yeah right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm just concerned about parking and safety in that area. I mean, is this going to up your property value? I mean, the property value going to go up in the whole neighborhood? Or... I don't know, <laughs> but I'm opposed. Due to the parking and the safety, I'm, I'm opposed. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anybody on the board have any questions? All right, uh, hearing none. Um, Mr. Uh, Nunez, am I saying your name correct? Did you want to have a chance to move up? Hey, you, you don't have to swear. You have to oh. swear. You're fine. Yeah. You can go ahead and. Oh, uh, yeah. no, I. I, I don't, we don't know if you wanted to have a rebuttal to Let me what you know. everything that, uh, so, um, as for yeah. the, the, with the, if you can go a little forward to the pictures where it shows the HVAC. Oh, right. keep going back. Keep going that, yep. that, that 1 right there. Right there uh, we think we might be able to move this a little closer and put this all around. Something that we were just talking about just now, but uh, for your concerns of you know being separated, we might be able to move, move a, put a fence, but also for the HVAC, um, I think we can move it to the other side of the of the garage. We can do anything to get this variant. So if if it takes moving the HVAC to the other side of the garage, that's fine. Um, also, before uh, while we were applying for the variants, we try to buy the the extra three feet of land from our neighbor um, and they weren't comfortable selling that because th then we wouldn't need the variance if we bought those three feet um, or four feet, I think. And they weren't comfortable because it was going to make everything messy if they try to sell their house um, later on in the future. It was it was just going to get everything too convoluted. So they weren't comfortable selling, but that's why they wrote us this letter saying that they don't mind. Um, Forget what else, what other issues you guys had that I, I could address. Uh, uh, they had a lot parking, of issues with yes, the parking. Um, yes. As you suggested, we, we can put cement down on. On where we're, where we're parking on the other side of the. Of the driveway, and that is, that's something that we can also do. Um, do you have a question? Yeah, when the, I see that when the builder permit was issued. It was issued as a garage uplift. Was yes. it always your intention to have people live there? Yes, it was always our intention. Why did you let your contractor put it as an uplift? We, we don't know the whole process. We, I'm just a regular Joe. I don't know what it takes to, to get a permit or build a garage. Ultimately, you are the property owner and you are responsible for that contractor that is on your property and what he permits. Right. And. I mean, all it says the uplift and uplift and uplift. And it says occupancy, residential, single family. But you can't have a, a, a single family. 
not my fault. It's your responsibility. Okay. Right. Yeah, that'll be our next step. I am very something that it's not theirs it's someone living in the main house because right now it's i don't live there but my sister's there my stepbrother's there my brother my, well, no. my yes I know. Yeah, and I, again, if we don't get this variance, we are going to have to go after, because we're trying to handle it without having to sue the, the contractor company, because that's just going to take a whole, probably more money and a whole lot of time. So we try to get the variance first. If we don't get it, then we're going to have to go after the contractor, and that's, that's going to be a whole other, other deal. Does any other board members have a question for Mr. Um, Alvarado? And uh, I don't know if uh, folks in opposition, if you want to respond to anything that Mr. Alvarado just said. Oh, yeah. Nunes. Okay, I see Alvarado. I have yeah. two last names. Two, yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Again, we we yeah, weren't the yeah. ones that filled out the application for the permits. It was all the contractor. They yeah, they handled they everything. Another house. Right. By the front. That didn't happen. All right, thank you. I guess I have one last one question. So what percent of the construction w was complete prior to the application for a garage outfit? A uh, percent, I do not know. Um, I wasn't living there the entire time. I was uh, in Clover, South Carolina with my brother. Oh, hang on. Okay, um, she's saying some stuff, the dividers, I'm not sure what that is. Um, but yeah, there was some work done again. We I, I thought only inside, if you're doing work inside, you didn't need a permit to do work inside. That's that's what we were under the impression of. But yeah, once, oh, and once they told put the stop work order, mm -hmm. we, we, they didn't go right back to work at five minutes later. They went to get everything out and, yeah. and start gathering their stuff. So it sounded like they were working, they weren't working. And so there, <clears throat> there was a, operable door garage door right and so 
was the exterior wall that infilled the garage door was that started or i have no idea oh okay so they had started work without a a contractor like without a company right um on the garage it was just uh i think like a couple guys doing the work inside that's when we got the stop work order and we were told we needed permits mm -hmm. so then we decided to get a, a an actual company and then they handled the permits the work perfect the yeah the that all makes sense. AYM mm -hmm. incorporated that's a, that's what i needed thank you yeah yeah so, somebody working on it before you I think a couple of weeks, like it, it was not that long, unless that's long for you guys. And it was. A couple of weeks, Lisa, isn't there a rule that says you don't need a permit if you're. I believe you still need a permit. Um, you can do it. You don't need a general contractor's license. Um, I, I think I got, I think I feel pretty comfortable with all the information I have. Okay. Are right. there any other questions for the applicant, um, from the board or from, I'm just calling you guys the neighbors. I don't want to say your opposition, you know, but the neighbors, um, I don't know if any other questions for, uh, the applicant. Good. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm just trying to give everybody a chance, you know? Yeah. Yes, we got a copy. Uh, it is not two men living there. She said the way she said it in Spanish made it seem like it was two guys. It's actually a, a couple, um, a man and a woman, and I'm guessing they have a child too. Yes. All right, great. Well, um, I think we're going to stop right there. Uh, thank you very much for coming today. Um, this concludes the, the, um, uh, this case right now. What we're going to do as a board, we're going to, we're going to deliberate. Um, while we're deliberating, no one can ask us questions. It's going to be very tempting for you to do that, but it's against the rules here. Uh, so we're going to um, have deliberations now. But thank you very much. Yep. You want to take a bottle break? That's fine. I should be back in uh, at ten thirty six.
that's really exciting. Yeah, I think they are. There's somebody on our K-12 team. Whether it's that or the mentorship one, maybe it's a little bit later. Um, she, we're, I'm kind of working on an internal one and an uh, internal internship. Um, she's, what's the other person's name? I don't know. No, um, trying to plug into the iPal for a minute. Don't want to stop. Jumped up there. Yeah, I think our ops director is saying 40 is his new thing. I was, 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 was going to suggest it, man. No, I was ready to put them in the room. Oh, yeah. No, but I was, I was, I was, I was, I was good. Yeah, maybe Avery Concepts are out there. Uh, All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, we're about to do the do deliberations. Um, I'm just going to stand up because I'm freezing. Uh, <laughs> but um, who, who would like to start? I think I can start. Um, so I, I feel like I understand the, the complaints of the neighbors. I, I, I get all that. Uh, but really, um, uh, ninety percent of all that is uh, is permitted in your area. Um, the number of people parking and the and that and all that really pertains to use by right, and uh, they have the the to right the right to use their, their property that way if they had a legal ADU. And the only thing standing in their way from this legal ADU is the six foot. Um, uh setback so um in thinking about that six foot, six foot setback um you know i think that if um if they had you know in reading the findings of fact here and and, and understanding the timeline that like i did not agree with this at all i felt like they absolutely uh were should be granted a variance in this situation um the and I think a, an unnecessary hardship would certainly be uh, having to uh, reverse construction. I, I don't think it is. Um, uh, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's reasonable to assume that somebody could move a compliant building or uh, or construct a compliant building when they're dealing with existing construction. Um, the uh, You know, so there's things specific about the property. I think that that result in the in the hardship. I think their request is is consistent with the spirit and purpose of the zoning ordinance. But I really think the actions of the applicant uh, created this hardship, and that that action, and which is not reflected in the findings of fact, unfortunately, is that they began significant upfit of a structure. Uh, without a zoning, uh, without without a building permit whatsoever, uh, you know, and I think that a case could be made for a, a, an honest and diligent application of a building permit, um, and, and having been issued um, in error as a garage outfit, and and them having a legitimate hardship, but I think anyone. Um, that is upfitting a structure to the extent that they're upfitting. Um, I think I think it's reasonable to assume that they should have a building permit for that that extent. And so uh, I feel like they they got themselves ninety percent down the road into this existing condition. Uh, 
and so they they they've kind of inflicted this on themselves in that situation so i, I would uh, i'm not leaning toward uh granting this variance uh mr hamid yeah i agree uh with all that's been said thus far um it this does kind of remind me of a another case that we heard recently again not apples to apples but kind of similar where you know general contractor comes in and the intent of the homeowner is to do the right thing general contractors uh you know that is part of the due diligence. Homeowners should do their due diligence, but uh, it's a complicated system that we have, especially when it comes to ADUs and zoning. And sometimes people aren't experts, and that's why they go out and hire a general contractor. And you know, they shift the the responsibility, but they don't technically shift the legal responsibility that they have. Um, all that being said, again, um, it's interesting to hear uh, the, you know, the impact of an ADU and how this is going to start to change the dynamics of these single family neighborhoods, especially as we move into other uh, zoning and you know, the UDO. So it's interesting to hear through some of the impacts. Uh, it's, it's also interesting to hear from the neighbors uh, in opposition uh, that it's less about the ADU as it is about the process they went through and also the impact, right? The parking, the safety. Uh, I hear all those concerns and some of those, you know, we can rectify through just doing the right thing. And it's important as we move into um, the UDO to understand the impact of what we're doing uh, to these neighborhoods. Uh, all that being said, I do think, uh, although it is the responsibility of the homeowner to do their due diligence, I do think based on some other cases we heard um, that they were just misinformed by the, the general contractor. And for that, I kind of lean towards uh, uh, giving them the variance in this case. Uh, Mr. Ryder. I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned about this. It, it, in the broader sense, it worries me as we move into the new UDOs. With building structures and ADUs and, and variances, and, and I understand the concern of homeowners trying to navigate this field. And so you do tend to rely on your general contractor to tell you what I mean, the contractor had to know he was building a single family residence and yet he applied for an upfit. And I'm thinking that's because he knew it wouldn't fly as a UD as an ADU. Um, and I'm sorry that it's out of compliance and I'm sorry that it's, it, it doesn't fit, but when do we stop making exceptions? And, and I know people come to us because it's an exception. My feeling it, it became, it's, it's so close to the property line. And I mean, they're close to the property line already because they're already inside the six foot. Now they want another four feet, and then you put an air conditioning unit, so now you got one foot. I, I don't know how I'm going to vote. I'm leaning toward um, upholding the zoning request to not approve this variance. But what do you say, John? Um, I'm actually leaning towards granting it. Um, I agree with most of what has been said so far. Um, I understand the, the neighbor's concerns, but on that, I will say, like, the fact that they could do this, but for the fact that they're encroaching, to me, makes the parking issues kind of irrelevant. It, it's something that, again, we wouldn't be here, but for the fact that it's built a little in the side yard. Um, the concerns about the CO and the parking, those are things that other departments within the city are responsible for enforcing. So they're parking on the street, they're parking in the garage, they've got to go through permitting, all that stuff gets handled somewhere else. Our question is, do they get four feet into the side yard? Their neighbor has said, who's directly impacted by that, has said they're okay with it. Um, unnecessary hardship. I think, you know, spending $50,000 and wasting it, I think is certainly an unnecessary hardship. 
you know, the hardship resulting from something peculiar to the property. Little less sure about where that factor comes in, but I would say we did see in the application things about the shape of the property and, and the, the angle of the lot line. And so I can say that there is something peculiar there. If the building permit application was purely, it just said they're doing a garage upfit, then I would certainly agree that that was something that was misleading and would probably hold the owner more accountable. But I think given that the notes here talk about the fact that it uses the word converted, it talks about adding walls, it talks about adding a bath and a hallway. I don't think it's on the homeowner who goes and hires a contractor to go behind them and say, well, this is what your permit said. And are you sure that upfit garage upfit is the proper designation to select when you're filling out the permit application? Um, I, I think we have certainly granted variances in other cases where there's been kind of a permit was issued or something by the city based on maybe something the city should have caught. Um, and then on the last point, again, I mean, I think allowing the encroachment doesn't really create any material impact. I mean, it, it's something that they could have done, but for the encroachment. So I think granting is, you know, consistent with the spirit and intent of the ordinance. So I'm inclined to grant it, but sounds like we're pretty divided on this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm torn too. Um, like uh, Mr. Hamid said, you know, we've seen cases like this before where the builder or the contractor will tell the applicant that, you know, everything's okay. And then next thing you know, they get a letter from the city saying that they violated the zoning permit. Um, and um, I know the applicant uh, said that he wanted to do this to have a house for his mom. I mean, what, what son or daughter wouldn't want to do that? Um, but again, I know we have guidelines that we have to follow um, that's from the zoning board as well as the city. So I'm, I'm still torn. I just have to, you just have to see how it goes when we get to voting. Um, I have a legal question. Do we have the ability to put any other conditions on it that would address kind of the concerns about an Airbnb or renting to three different people with three different cars? Or is there anything like that that we can do? I think that goes to the use of the property, and that's really outside of your purview. Okay. Um, um, since you were about to say something. Kind of divided. Maybe I can sort of offer a few things to think about or for discussion. Um, you know, when when looking for hardships, um, certainly cost. You know, it comes up in cases, um, but the hardship. A financial hardship should not be the only factor. Um, uh, hardships that result conditions that are peculiar to the property. That's one I kind of maybe wanted you to think about and discuss. You know, hardships peculiar to the applicant is different than hardships peculiar to the property. So remember, I think I uh, talked about this a little bit before about personal circumstances um, should not be taken into consideration. Um, in in that regard, um, and um, wait a minute. Let me just ask a clarifying question. On that. Are you saying that it is not a hardship if the if the denial of the variance would result in having to undo the construction? I mean, it would if you were like, hey, we got to tear off the side of a house. You, you would say that's a hardship, right? That that there is a hardship okay. there, and the courts have recognized that. Um, but the hardship should not just be solely financial. And this board has. And a couple of you were not on the board at this time, um, but the board has required um, excess or uh, the structures. Yes, structures to be removed yes. that did not meet the other qualifications. Um, so I know there's some discussion of what we have granted in the past, um, but you also have denied in the past and required that um, some accessory structures actually be be removed um, even when permits have been issued. So things to think about, discuss further, maybe you all can come to a agreement or not. I think it comes back to if they had just upfitted the garage, we wouldn't be here. 
because it was the footprint that was already there. It was an upfit to use as a, a, an office or craft room or just to have access to a bathroom that wasn't inside the house. But it's not an upfit. It's a three bedroom kitchen bathroom. And if you're going to do that, you have to have permits. And even before they got a contractor, they just they went in and just started this. And either they got in over their heads or they didn't know or they got this. the inspector came out and said, look, you need permits. I mean, that that's where I'm coming from, because that to me, that is. A result of. Property owners. Creating their own problems. What's your definition of garage upfit? Well, that's what I asked Lisa and she said a garage upfit could be where you. Eat it, I guess, and put a bathroom in to use it, but not as living space as. Uh, not permanent living space, like bedrooms and, and bathrooms and. Um, kitchens, but to use it as an, an office space, I guess. Well, remember, if we ask. I'm just repeating what okay. she told me. Okay. No, I'm not asking her another question. Okay. I'm saying that's what she told me. She said as a, some people use it as a home gym. Some people use it as, you know, a, a, an office space. Well, understand Lisa's a zoning administrator that understands what the code says, but I'm saying you as a regular individual, if somebody says, I'm going to up, upfit my garage. Like, you're what, supposed to understand that distinction. I mean, well, you're putting yeah, okay. that on the owner. I don't think that like an individual property owner is going to understand when you say I'm upfitting my garage. That means. Well, I can put an office in there, but I can't put a bed in there. Well, I would, because we upfitted our garage. We put. You renovated your garage, put, right? You could renovate it in different ways, right? But to me, the term upfit, if you want to say it has some kind of legal meaning, I, I think in com common parlance, it could have a bunch of different meanings. And I wouldn't render a decision based purely on that word upfit. Well, I'm not rendering it totally on that. But I'm not rendering it totally on that it's going to cost them to tear it down either. I mean, what I'm saying is there's nuances in all of this. Mm -hmm. And the the letter from the next door neighbor, as Joe pointed out, we can we can talk about it, but it's hearsay because that person is not here to affirm that that's what they're saying. I'm not saying they're lying, but it's just a it's just a piece of paper. They're also not here objecting either. Though. That's true, but my feeling is you got yourself in deep water and now they're asking us to bail the boat out after it's sinking. Because if we approve this variance, okay, it's only four feet, but, but we can't put any conditions on it because it's by right unit of the property. So. Once they put it in these three bedrooms and two in a bath, if they wanted to rent it to three people, they could. So, I mean, what do you do in good faith? They say they're going to put in a, a, a pad, a concrete pad. Well, again, unless you keep calling zoning to come out there and look and they got to, they've got to see the, the cars parked on the, in the yard. Or they, they can't cite them. And if they can't see it. Then they can just keep doing it. It's. It's just, it's a catch 22 for it is, everybody. It is, it is. I'm looking at this unnecessary hardship would not result. The hardship does not result from conditions that are peculiar to the property. Well, the, the property, the, the footprint for the garage was already there. And because it was already there, it's kind of grandfathered. Unless they had put in this basically a rental unit. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm feeling that 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 it was kind of it was a mess from the start. It's not the first mess we saw. Something like this. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, are there any other comments you want to make? You know, I, I the the only 
the only finding in fact that I was having trouble with was the hardship as it results from the actions of the applicant and it, and I'm and because we're we're talking about precedent and and going back to these things and and looking them over I I I'm really worried that there's no reference to them having this uh this action prior to the um the violation so I it's just um you know, if this thing were, if this decision were stood up on it on its own as it is, I'm not sure that I would feel great about using this as a as a precedent. I don't know if there's any fact that I don't know that there's any fact in here other than the admission that there was construction done prior. I don't know. I think uh, we're all kind of saying the same thing, but different ways. Um, I think at this point, we're just going to have to go and go into a, the period of voting. Just see what the chips fall from doing that. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end deliberations. And now we are going to go into a period of voting. So, is there a motion on the floor to approve or deny this variance? Now, remember, we can't add any extra things to it. It's got to be an up, an up or down a vote. Well, what, yeah. the motion would have to be to uphold the yeah. either uphold the zoning administrator's recommendation to deny the variance. Yes. Or to overturn zoning administrator's recommendation. So that's how that's yeah. one of those two. Yeah. I make a motion to approve the variance. I can't hear you. So I make a motion to approve the variance. So to to this is either to grant or deny the variance. Yeah, not I make a motion to grant the variance. I meet second. I the motion has variance. been made to grant the variance, and that was made by Mr. Floyd and seconded by Mr. Hamid. Now we move into a roll call vote, Mr. Hamid. Hamid, yes. Uh, Mr. Court. Court, yes. Mr. Dryden. Dryden, no. Mr. Floyd. Floyd, yes. All right. Uh, Wilson, yes. So, if my math is correct, um, the, the the variance has been approved, right? Yes, Chair. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes that case, but Street before we conclude it, so before we conclude it, finish. Ah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so before we conclude it, uh, we're going to go into, we have to put a finding in facts and clues of law. So paragraph 10, I think there's a typo. It says to a neighbor compliant, I think should be complaint. I thought my eyes were messed up. Thanks. <laughs> And then I think otherwise it's just addressing the conclusions of law. Unnecessary hardship would delete the word not result. The hardship delete does not and say the hardship results from. Paragraph 3, the hardship does add not result from actions and then paragraph 4, the requested variance is delete the word not consistent with spirit of 10, blah, blah, blah. Did you get that candy? Can you repeat that real quick, John? Yeah, so paragraph 10, did you get that one? Yes, sir. All right, then on the conclusions of law, paragraph one, delete the word not. Okay. Paragraph two, delete the words does not and add S to the end of result. Paragraph three, add the word not between does and result. Paragraph four, delete the word not. Thank you. And also under um, finding of facts, you have the number two twice. As number two, the property is located at the address, and then again, number two, the subject property. So, so you just need to report. Yeah, yeah, just need to be ordered at. Do we change twenty five? The request is. Consistent uh, yeah. With yeah. Yep, it's consistent. That's correct. Number sixteen, we... number nineteen, and number twenty one as well. Yeah. yeah. So 16 would be the hardship does not result. Yes. 
And number 18, did you say 18? 19. 19. All right, the hardship does result. Hardship results, I'm sorry. 21, do 21 do not. Unless, yeah, do not. Do we, uh, the 23, the existing ADU could be moved within a compliant building area or portion? I, I don't know. We need that? I don't. I don't oh. think that's needed. I mean, it just seems unreasonable to assume somebody could move a slab on grade structure. So we just remove number 23? Yeah, I just don't think it's necessary for the purposes of the decision that was made. If we were going to deny it, I think it makes sense to keep it. And 20, well, 22 is the same way. Yeah. And 24. So yeah, I would say delete 22, 23, and 24. 20. I had 20 coming out too. Yeah. Are there any additional uh, facts that you could add um, that would go along with number 19 conditions specific to the property? Can you name a few? I think the shape of the property. The configuration of the existing structures. Is that going again? It's going at the end of 19. The hardship results from conditions specific to the property, semicolon, shape of the property, and the configuration of existing structures. Okay. Any other um, edits? Finding facts in the course of law? Um, hearing none, is there a motion to improve the finding facts and conclusions of law as amended? I make that motion. Second. A motion has been uh, moved by Ms. Dryden and seconded by Mr. Floyd. Now moving to a roll call vote. Mr. Floyd? Floyd, yes. Ms. Dryden? Dryden, yes. Uh, Mr. Court? Court, yes. Mr. Hamid? Hamid, yes. Wilson, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Last thing on the agenda is the approval of the January minutes. Uh, so everybody should have a copy of that. I can vote on that, right? Even though I'm here, I can share. That was, that was I'll ask that every time. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so is there a motion to approve uh, 31st, 2020? Move to approve. Oh, whoops. Yeah. No, uh, can't approve that. <laughs> the wrong dates are at the top. It should be 2023. You get a pass for January. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and so, yeah, and then it's the header as you get through on. Yeah. Approved subject with, to that with, with amendment, yeah. yeah. All right, is there a motion to pass amended? So moved. Second, is there a second? Second, second, Mr. Floyd, yes, Mr. Dryden, yes, Fort, yes, Hamid, yes, 